Dr. Poon, so as a professor in electrical engineering, you have taken a truly fascinating approach to modulating very basic biological processes through really tiny electronic devices implanted in the body. And recent studies uh, from your group have suggested that these devices could have promising potential in preventing memory loss in Alzheimer patients. Um, so let's start foundationally with the question of why even think about devices as an alternative or an adjunct to traditional molecular therapeutics? Yeah, I think traditionally when we think about you know, disease treatment, then we, we think about let's take some drug and have the chemical way to modulate the biological activities. But the, the issue it is um, our nervous systems not only communicating using, using a chemical way, they're also using electrical way mm -hmm. to communicate. For example, um, the action potential is the, one of the signals that it is propagating. Uh, within our nervous system, mm -hmm. right? That means electrical signaling is also one of the communication uh, 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 method that naturally used by our body. Mm -hmm. In this case, can we directly, you know, modulate the electrical signals mm -hmm. such that it could achieve certain therapeutic outcome mm -hmm. that could be accomplished by by a chemical way, which is what we normally thought about it. Mm -hmm. And that's how it motivated me to think about can we build electronics that are really, really small such that it could put very close to the area mm -hmm. where we want the therapeutic action. Mm -hmm. The good thing about electronics it is we can control precisely the timing. Mm -hmm. And the, also, you know, because we put it close to the region, so mm -hmm. we can also control the spatial location, mm -hmm. precise temporal and spatial uh, resolution for the therapeutic treatment. Mm -hmm which is different from chemical way it is. We take the drug and it may act globally throughout the body mm -hmm. so that the um, temporal resolution part may be missing. Mm -hmm. And also the temporal part, it is through the diffusion, chemical diffusion, which is we don't have much control mm. over it. Right. And that's how we begin our, our work. It is, uh, is it possible to use an electrical way to treat diseases? Mm -hmm. but is it possible to build the devices that is so small that we can put inside to just targeting a particular area to change that uh, biological process? Mm -hmm. Right, okay, fascinating. So there's, from what I gather, there's an increasing resolution of drug, develop, of drug delivery in both the space and kind of in terms mm -hmm. of time. But this likely comes you know, at a tricky cost, requiring energy sources um, that may not be practically gained from traditional coils and, and batteries. Mm -hmm. um, so how have you worked to really bypass this constraint in, in developing in delivering energy uh, excuse me to sources deep within body cavities yeah, and you, you asked a very good question right in order to 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 put the electrons inside the body, a major obstacle is the energy source mm -hmm. right. Um, conventionally, you know, uh, we may think about it's just use inductive coupling, which is kind of the same mechanism as our electric toothbrush. Mm. This is what we use in our first pacemaker. Mm. The first pacemaker, actually, the powering mechanism is very similar to our electric toothbrush. Wow. Could you believe it? Wow. <laughs> right? We have the toothbrush, it is our pacemaker. Right. The right. base station, it is the one we put outside to power the pacemaker. Mm -hmm. And then, this is the first demonstration it is in 19, 1950. Mm -hmm. So after about 60 years, we still use the same method if we have to deliver energy inside the body to power up certain electronics. Mm -hmm. The problem with it, it is, as you just mentioned, the dimension of the coil and everything will be large. Mm -hmm. So therefore, what we are doing it is we try to challenge this conventional wisdom that we have to operate the devices in what we call the near field regime, which is mm -hmm. very close to each other. Mm -hmm. um, we study, you know, what's the fundamental to, of electromagnetic waves propagating through the tissue. Mm -hmm. And we discovered that actually there's an a alternative way 
to deliver energy using electromagnetic waves, but not operating in the near field, but operating in the mid-field regime. Mm -hmm. By operating in the mid-field regime, we can deliver energy to small coil that it is embedded deep into the body, like we demonstrate a, a pacemaker that is really like the size of a, a, uh, a rice. Wow. And then test it inside both the uh, rapid and mm -hmm. also the paid model mm. um, that is able to do pacing with a um, transmitter that put outside the body will be the size of your small iPhone. Mm -hmm. Not the iPhone 7 or whatever, the big one, just the small one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the size of it and also the amount of average power will be similar to the phone. Mm -hmm. And it's able to deliver enough power to do um, hard pacing and also enough to deliver power to do uh, uh, brain pacing, the mm -hmm. brain stimulation as well. Mm -hmm. And so are these really small rice grain sized devices that you're implanting in the brain in some of these animal studies, are they hypothesized to work through deep brain stimulation in preventing uh, memory loss in Alzheimer that's what models? We, that's what we are hoping to do. Mm -hmm. so, so the way we look at it, it is after we, we demonstrate this uh, uh, newer method to do the powering, uh, I took a year off in 2015. I try to think about, you know, is there any uh, applications that currently cannot be treated by the chemical drugs? Mm. A, lot, a lot of this demo that we see, um, for example, using bioelectronics to treat diseases, mm -hmm. there's already drug to do it. Mm -hmm. It would be nice that it would, it, we can provide an alternative method that drug has, is still struggling how to do it. And I'm also interested in the problem of aging. So mm -hmm. therefore, I um, settle on Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. and, and because for the Alzheimer, the early stage Alzheimer, I think I can draw a one-to-one -one analogy. It is like the connection between the cash and the hard drive. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you how it works. Um, for, for example, today, I'm, I'm focusing on the episodic memory. Mm -hmm. So for example, today, I'm talking with you in the uh, Ligarsen building. Mm -hmm. So it has the events, it has the people, it has the context. Mm -hmm. So it is a episode, an episodic memory. Mm -hmm. So a, a set of neurons that in my brain is already recruited for this episode. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. later, when I go to sleep, so it's really connected to the next session that I'm in, mm -hmm. <laughs> sleep, uh, these neurons will replay. Mm -hmm. and then it will do the downstream consolidation. The analogy, it is like the, in, the neurons that now is recorded in my brain, it is like stored in the cache. Mm -hmm. So when I sleep, then it will try to transfer to the hard drive for long-term storage. The problem with early stage Alzheimer's mm -hmm. patient is there's plaques that it is in the cache. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it makes it more difficult to transfer it from the cache to the hard drive. Mm -hmm. So now what we try to do it is can we artificially induce this replay? Mm -hmm. Basically, it's using electrical signals to identify the set of neuronal assembles corresponding to this episode, mm -hmm. to, to the neurons that are encoded for that episode. Mm -hmm. And then electrically stimulate it. Mm -hmm. It is to mimic the replay that we did when we sleep. Mm -hmm. And to help it a little bit, to potentiate a little bit, such that it can pass the plaque. Mm -hmm. and then to continue the downstream consolidation and store it, store back to the hard drive. Mm -hmm. So the complete solution, it is based on, you know, talking to the language of the nervous system, which is the electrical signal, mm -hmm. and we just help it a little bit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by strengthening the electrical signal a little bit such that this obstacle, the plaques, we just overcome it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so the, I think this is a very natural usage of electrical uh, stimulation, just talking to the language of the, of the body mm -hmm. to help it a little bit. Right. Yeah. Now, if we think about extending or enhancing memory formation through electrical mm -hmm. stimulation, in this case, in disrupting plaque formation of Alzheimer patients, mm -hmm. and we look beyond that to enhancing memory formation in, in otherwise healthy individuals. Do you see um, potential future use cases for these micro devices in uh, the broader population and stimulating memory formation and capabilities? I think that will touch the issue of ethical issues that I think it will be, I, I would like to just focus on using it for people that already is ill right. instead of trying to make people smarter. Right. 
I think to make people smarter and all this, I would prefer that it will become say wearable devices. Let's say monitor how well we sleep, monitor our brain waves, mm -hmm. how well we are learning, mm -hmm. and get us some feedback mm. to uh, perform better instead of really put something inside mm -hmm. to enhance us. Um, that's too too much. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> So in other words, from what I hear you're saying is we have, um, we're developing this interesting technology to really stimulate certain circuitries within the brain. Mm -hmm. And an additional use case of that would be to capture certain information really relating to memory formation that can uh, have broader implications to ill and also healthy populations. Yes, yeah, yeah. But, but we will focus, hope we, our main focus is still for the ill first. Right, right. <laughs> Fascinating. Yeah. So what are some um, existing bottlenecks that you see in your kind of initial studies in, in implementing these devices in, in humans or, or further along the translational yeah. so one process? Of the, one of the major obstacles in my opinion it is um, we do, we do deep, people already do deep brain stimulation for many years right. and it happened that actually not many people really understand how electrical stimulation works. Mm -hmm. um, so. I'm also shocked that you know if you talk to electrophysiology or talk to biologists uh, or even talk to engineer, no one have a complete understanding on how electrical stimulation works because the electro interact with the tissue mm -hmm. and it will change the properties, mm -hmm. right? And then not not a single discipline of people is try to really fully understand the entire process. Mm -hmm. And this is what we are trying to do right now. Mm -hmm. We try to build a very fundamental understanding of how electrical stimulation works. Mm -hmm. what, uh, especially if we want to make the electro really small. Mm -hmm. And to do stimulation, this is tricky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Well, we look forward to learning more about all the advancements in the field from you and your team. And thank you so much for sharing oh, all your welcome. work and insights with us here at Big Data. Yeah. My pressure, you're very welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.